morning. Uh, right, well, shall I, um, shall I crack on then? I'm just going to yeah. mute everyone else, Paul, and then I'll unmute you, if that's all right. Good. That'll help. Okay, whenever, <clears throat> whenever you're ready. Okay. Right, well, this morning, oh, we're having a look at Ephesians. Good morning, Chris. Uh, chapter 2. Oh, I just uh, need to my person. I want... Yeah. So I'm just going to start off by reading through the passage. Uh, it's Paul writing to the Ephesians. And in this bit, he's particularly talking to the Gentiles, those that weren't Jews. So therefore, remember that formerly... You who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he who is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside his flesh, the law, with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body reconciled both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. But through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So the theme this week is about thriving and how it is um, that we as a church um, at St. Swithin's and we as the Church of Christ can and should be thriving. Uh, and there's so much in here, so kind of boiling it all down to a few minutes is, um, is a, a wee bit of a challenge. Um, and I only woke up once or twice in the middle of the night thinking, oh gosh, what on earth am I going to do? But anyway, here we go. Um, there are three paragraphs and three sections in here and the first paragraph really is all about how uh, we were apart from God. Um, this is talking about the Gentiles, this first paragraph, and really saying that they were separate from Christ and without hope and without God in the world. And um, of course you don't have to be a non-Jew to be in this position. Um, elsewhere, Paul makes clear that in, in a real sense, um, before becoming Christians and knowing God through uh, the work of the Spirit, we are all separate from God, and we were all without hope, and we were without God in the world. And so we were all apart that is the natural state of humanity. It's the first paragraph. Second paragraph. But um, through what Jesus did, uh, we have been reconciled. Uh, so no longer are we apart, but we're reconciled. Reconciled to God. And I love this phrase creating in Christ one new humanity. 
And I think at this particular time, um, when I think it's today that actually there's a, there's a global summit um, being chaired on the whole uh, business of finding a cure for, for coronavirus. And, and the big message I think that's going out there is that this is, this is a challenge for the whole of humanity. And it gives us a chance to pull together as humanity in order to conquer this particular challenge. This uh, particular paragraph talks about the way in which um, Christ brought together um, those who were in Israel and those who were outside of Israel, the Jews and the non-Jews, to create a new humanity so that those of us who were far away, which is all of us, uh, can be brought near and brought to relationship with, with Christ. Um, so, third paragraph. This is the outcome. Together, consequently, uh, we're no longer foreigners and strangers, fellow citizens. And we get this fantastic analogy of being a building. Um, in him, in Christ, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And the temple, don't forget, is the place that God put in place uh, in the Old Testament so that, uh, so that his people could meet him. And the new temple is the church. And the church is people, not a building. And it's in that temple, in that edifice of all these people, with Jesus as the chief cornerstone, that people can meet the Lord. And here is our verse for the day, folks. It's the last verse. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And I'd like to suggest that this applies to us as a whole church, church of planet Earth, the church of Christ in this world, but actually it also applies to us at St. Swithin's in Walcott, that we too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So here we are, summary. We were apart, we were all apart from God, Jesus' work has reconciled us to him. It's, he's made a pathway through, and uh, that this enables us now to be together uh, with him so that we too at St. Swithin's be built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And to the theme of this week, this is how we thrive. And this is where the life comes from that enables us to thrive, uh, becoming the dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, uh, for all that you've done through Jesus in order to uh, enable us to know you and to become citizens of your kingdom. And we pray that in this particular week, that you would help us continue to be built together as a church, a church without a building at the moment, uh, to reflect your glory in our town and in our world. Amen. <clears throat>